Hi there and welcome to the AC inverter project. The purpose of an inverter circuit is to turn a DC supply into an AC supply. So for example, if you were if you had a DC supply at home, you could run AC type applications off it, such as hair dryers and lights. To do that, we use or in this circuit I've used an oscillator, a Vinebridge oscillator, very well known type of oscillator which produces good uh, low frequency oscillations and that oscillator is is this circuit here that I'm circling and that's fed to what is effectively an em emitter follower op amp follower that's this circuit and the follower has a, a gain of one so there's no power gain there's no actual voltage gain but we get power gain the follower output the output of the follower goes to a MOSFET push-pull stage and you will see on the circuit itself that both of these MOSFETs are connected to heat sinks because they get extremely hot even at relatively low power settings. So a much closer look at the circuit itself. A couple of things I want to bring into your attention. Here I've, I've um, this is a power supply in and I've separated each of these with a, a, just a piece of rubber there. And that's to stop any possible short circuits. This lamp here is very important to the Weinbridge oscillator because it plays part in the feedback of the oscillator. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that when we do the simulation of the circuit. You, in real time, you won't be able to see the LEDs glowing like this, but because of the frames per second of, of this video capture, you, you can actually see them glowing on and off. And then we've got the output there, and once again the output is also, as you can see, separated by a piece of rubber. And a little close up on the heat sinks as well. You can see the bubbles around the heat sinks. A couple of things about the my bridge oscillator and also the inverter itself. I would say that in terms of this project there's an awful lot still to do because we're using relatively low value DC power supplies here. In a practical circuit you might need to think about putting these power supplies up to maybe 24, maybe 48 volts because the current draw at low voltages is going to be extremely large and, and your circuit is going to get very very hot. So the higher you can make the DC supply the less heat you're going to lose in terms of and you lose a lot of heat in power. The Oscillator itself is split into two parts. It has the gain part, which is this network that I'm tracing with the finger here. And the gain is set by R1 and R2. We've got R1 and R2. And R2 is a trimming resistor because you need to trim the gain to get the, the oscillator to now, oscillate. To tune the oscillator itself you're going to need to use this this variable resistor I've got my finger pointing at and that will determine how good your sine wave is as you can see from the from the oscilloscope we don't have a particularly brilliant sine wave I could make a better sine wave for sure by, tu by tuning that there so I'm going to tune it and see one way Not easy to see sometimes. And by going the other way, we get a much better sine wave. We lose a little bit of amplitude, but we get a percent better sine wave. And then we have R3 and a lamp. Now the lamp plays an important part in this circuit. When the for a wine bridge oscillator to oscillate we need a, this network to provide a gain of three and it must stay at a gain of three if it goes lower than three the oscillates oscillations begin to die away and if it goes higher than three the oscillations begin to saturate so it's got to stay at three the lamp filament will heat up so if for example if the gain increases a little bit we get more current flowing through this lamp filament here and the lamp filament will heat up. As it heats up its resistance will increase and effectively lower the gain. So this X1 the lamp plays 
a very important part in the Weinberg oscillator. The other part of the circuit is the two networks here. We've got two RC networks, one's a series RC, RC network and the other one's a parallel RC network and effectively they work together with the gain network to produce oscillations and you can find those oscillations always at 1 over 2 pi times R times C and for this type of oscillator R and C in the RC networks are always matched they need to be matched and the closer the match is the better the quality of your output and more stable it will be so once you've once you've once you've built this and you've built the follower your power will come from the MOSFETs and typically they'll be, uh, be able to swing within perhaps a couple of volts of the positive and negative rails on my circuit, the one that you're going to see, my uh, output swings go to about 10 volts or so, give or take. OK, let's get on to the real circuit. Hi, Billy Ray Lewis here to tell you about my inverter project. So what we've got here is a, an inverter. An inverter is a circuit that converts DC into AC. And what we would do is we're going to use an oscillator, so if we'd like to zoom in. This is a PCB here, we've got an oscillator there, a Vinebridge oscillator, 50 hertz, and we've got an emitter follower there. And I've got the circuit di diagram to show you um, when we get to that point. We've got two MOSFET, power MOSFETs, in a push-pull configuration, and I've got them in water at the moment. They're on heat sink and water. We can see from this temperature here that the temperature of, of this heat sink is about 54 to 55 degrees. When you first switch the transistors on, the circuit first comes on, you get quite a rapid uh, rise in temperature. And then as the water temperature approaches the temperature of the heat sink, it slows right off. So it's possibly exponential, but I haven't got time to find out. Uh, two power supplies, it's dual rail, these aren't exactly dual rail but I've converted them into dual rail by what you do is you connect the negative of one to the positive of the other and that kind of form the ground of the circuit and we can see that I just used transistors that I had available, they're not matched and you would want matched ones ideally to get this to, to work perfectly. We can see the current draw here from on one transistor and the other transistor and this is the main current draw with both of them put together. We can work out the power dissipation by taking the current draw. I'm going to take the current draw of the negative MOSFET, the P-channel one, on the negative swing. And we can see that we've got about 2.28 amps. And if you then measure the voltage, of course I have to do this carefully, and measure the voltage between the drain and the source and if you just look on the on the dial there on the uh, you can see it's about mm, about seven volts so power power dissipated is equal to current times voltage therefore we've got about 14 watts of power dissipation with this uh, with, with this heat sink and this, this transistor co combination uh, we've got the output of this, the inverter, goes to a transformer and when the transformer has, is not loaded, at the moment this is loaded up with a, a sort of 30 ohm resistor with electrical load, but when it's not loaded we have a situation where you're getting about 120 volts out of this transformer with this configuration. Unfortunately, in order for us to be able to get more in terms of voltage and lower loads, we would need to do quite a lot with this power supply. And we'll talk about that in a little bit later on. So, there we have it. This circuit is a really good project for uh, level 3, level 4, BTEC. Lots and lots of problems still there for you to solve. Lots of good links to science. Just to reiterate, main problems are consider putting some type of amplifier between the Weinbridge oscillator and the follower. This gives you control over the amplitude of the oscillations so you can match them to the transformer. That's, that's one. 
you're going to need to look at the DC power supply in terms of how large it needs to be because believe you me you try and use this circuit even for a modest power supply requirement you're going to create a lot of heat and a lot of smelly insulation so you're going to need to look at that you're going to need to look at the heat sinking issues we've talked a little bit about those and you're going to need to look at matching the MOSFETs okay goodbye good luck I hope you enjoy this project and take it further bye bye